Finally, to tell the journey of past tense. As you can see, I'm smiling. I'm not sad. I'm very proud. And I'm going to read you my story that I sent out on the 20th of February. I received an email in reply to my message four days later, a plea. That plea, I'm going to read out, but if I have one person, just one person listening right now, that will make all the difference. It won't feel so silent. And I would have been heard. And I hope that I can encourage somebody else to speak up. Take back your life. And do all you can to educate through whatever storm you're going through. Let me start. I want to share this while I'm going, so uh, bear with me, won't you? Just bear with me. It'll be so well. Found me. <laughs> I found me. I think it's better if I put this in. Hello. Is the volume okay for you to hear me? Because I want to tell you a story. And it's a real life story. So I was just trying to um, get my devices set up and to make sure that you could hear me okay. Is the volume okay? <laughs> I came across an email today, which was a reminder of my journey. I don't mind you sharing this out if you're part of the MOM project. Uh, share it into there because it is a journey that many of us some of us will experience and some of us would not but I just want to tell you if you bear patient with me I'm going to read it I wrote a public I, read, I, read, I wrote a plea out in um, thank you I wrote a plea out in 2017 a plea to save my life and um, as you know, you know when you go knocking on those doors for help, uh, sometimes you get the same answer over and over and over again. You know they are they they've been telling us the story of baby Jesus since he since we've been so small and how uh, Mary had knocked on doors and doors and doors and 
Nobody ever wanted to really answer those doors, despite heavily pregnant. Well, I wasn't pregnant in this story, so at the end of the day, thank God for that. Um, so the email, I'm going to work my way backwards, right to the my plea. The subject and the title is A Urgent Plea for My Life. The response is Dear Kerry, thank you for your recent email. Unfortunately, there's famous words, unfortunately, we do not have the resources to advise you in writing. We would encourage you to contact our legal advice line for free and confidential advice on your situation. We provide legal advice on sexual violence and general criminal law issues, including sexual violence, police station procedures, giving evidence and the trial, compensation and complaints. Oh, people cannot call me in the middle of a lie. <laughs> Perhaps I'll tag her in it. There we go. I'm sure no. Um, so, um, I meant to put it on airplane mode, which is what I'm going to do right now. So bear with me, I'm sorry. A bit nervous. <laughs> but I'm going to remove those nerves. And I can figure out the phone. You know when you want to do something and something goes against you for wanting to sort of come out and say something right now. So all I'm just lo looking to do, oh, I found it, thank you very much. So now I can get on with it. Right, hopefully no more interruptions. So the problem is when you get those emails back, when you're pleading for your life, and you get those emails back and they use those words unfortunately we do not have the resources it, it leaves you in desperation to think you know what 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 else do i have to do i've just put my life on the line i'm speaking out against everything i've ever known and i'm going to remove all the fear and I'm going to follow all the right procedures and I'm going to do my best to survive here, to survive this storm. So I wrote in relation to this email that I've just said to you, the over or unfortunately rejection. This is my public plea. This is my plea that I wrote to several people asking for help. And I did everything in my power to save my life. I wrote to the rights of women. That's what I wrote to. And that's the response that I got was, unfortunately. So this is my plea that I wrote on the 16th of February, 2017 at 11 o'clock. The subject, a urgent plea for my life. I am begging for my life. I want to live. I'm using my tools to speak out. Hopefully someone will take the time to help me out of this awful, horrendous ordeal. I am 46 year old female living alone. I am using my tool to speak out. I'm sorry. Health and life is at risk because of bullying from a state agent and a male tenant. Please can someone help me as I have an estate agent and a tenant from hell both ganging up on me and bullying me daily. I can't sleep, I can't stay, I can't leave, I'm stuck 
Nobody is helping me. The estate agent feels he can discriminate me against me for reporting harassment from the tenant in the same household as myself. He is living in a HMO, a house of multiple occupancy. And I'm supposed to be in a self-contained studio flat attached to the HMO, except finding out that it's not a studio flat. As the perpetrator is able to contact my contact my electric and my heating in my hot water and switching off my electric supply, leaving me to fear for my life. Because I reported the estate agent what the 40 year old male tenant was doing to me and a young 26 year old male what he was doing to that male too the estate agent has taken it upon himself to add to the bullying and unite with the perpetrator and bully me more he wants me out for reporting harassment and violence example the tenant who has been bullying me has beaten up the young tenant in the house. The 40 year old male tenant has been sending me threatening texts, stalking me, filming me, banging with what sounds like a sledgehammer. Racist audio repeatedly played over and over containing the words scum, black bastards, coons, etc. This goes on all night until around 7 a.m. That's when I try to get some rest. I can't even go down, I can't even go to bed downstairs as the estate agent comes in my home when it suits him. The tenant has threatened to chop me up, blocked my car in also, so I can't escape. He has texted me distress in Texas. He has told me that he has shot his brother and he has threatened via text to put his head on a gas hob and to see heads through the glass window. The evidence is endless. Example, he has been trained to keep awake for eight days because of his military background. I'm to be aware and he can keep me awake. He keeps switching off my electric, plunging me into darkness, calling me names. The list is endless, all of which I have evidence of. The estate agent who owns his own company has threatened me on the phone over on three occasions, telling me he's going to make my life harder. The estate agent has let himself in without notice, or on two occasions, one of those, I was naked. This is recorded. He said I've seen your type before, not sure what content of his statement is because it's, is it because I'm mixed race and as a single woman or is it because I suffer with mental ill health, with suicide tendencies and self-harm, all of which I have managed through the years, help from the NHS when I needed them. My support worker has pleaded with the council to help me out of this fear of violence situation as it has taken a toll on my mental health and he fears really bad for me having to endure this behaviour. I unfortunately could not stand the sheer amount of abuse and victimisation, harassment etc. I have ended up self-harming again because it's my cry for help. Now this could have been avoided if the law was followed and I was helped out of this daily situation. 170 communications by emails, telephone conversations, pleading for help to stop this abuse. The police have been to the property at least 17 times in the last few weeks and at least always five officers at a time attend because the tenant is very well known to the police. The police were even going to taser him at one point. I have shown evidence at all stages to the police 
and the, and, and the borough council and the local MP and the local councillor of the tenant and the estate agent's behaviour towards me. All of them know, but no action, just hot air. I have on record the estate agent calling me crazy on my calling me crazy on my doorstep. I have admittance on recorded recordings of the estate agent entering my property. Was I sleeping when he entered without warning? It's frightening. The estate agent today called me crazy and banging down my front door. He has called me and said he would make my life harder. This has been extremely unbelievable and unbearable and a total disregard for my human rights. I thought I thought of an easy way at one stage that would leave death on the authority's hands. But I stand in my truth with a plea for help. I have a file so big and those who have had it are very slow in their actions leaving me daily at the hands of these two bullies. The council was supposed to help me through fear of violence and dealing with mental health. However, they have in their own rights offered to get me into a woman's refuge. But that's a tall order. As I was told, <laughs> sorry my loves, as I was told once, it's up to me to take myself there. Because of this, they only take cases that are to do with boyfriends or husbands, meaning I went to the refuge, sorry. They couldn't take me in through fear of the tenant or the estate agent. The authorities are leaving me in the same situation rather than assisting me with the correct procedures. They are discriminating against me, I feel. I have been to every authority in this town for help and all they do is shirk responsibility and say it's civil or tell the police. The police say tell the landlord, the landlord says tell the police, call 999. Well I have and I'm still enduring this now daily. Civil? Yes, but who's going to stop the bullying right now? Who's going to save me? There is so much to express and I can't believe this sheer amount of emotional roller coaster I'm going through and I'm holding on for my life because I'm speaking out the truth. We have had at least 30 police officers make more come, um, maybe more come when we call but they walk away with their hands in their pockets. The only hero here is my partner who supported me daily and had numerous talks with the police officers and local authorities. They all listen but no action. Negligence from those authorities in the town is outrageous. My hero who is trying to keep me safe is a decorated ex-police officer who served through the London bombings yet very service, the very service he served for is letting me down daily. I am not safe. I am being bullied. I am being victimized and harassed. My disability is being disregarded. My life is being disregarded. Our pleas are being overlooked. Why? How many more times do I have to explain myself over and over again just to get some help, to stop the persecution on my life? What about my human rights? Over 50 emails and counting over 100 calls for help regarding what what is happening to me, us. The police did put safeguarding referrals in, but it's been weeks and no contact from the relevant people. A community trigger was pulled. If that <laughs> had live bullets, I'd be dead because none of the above is helping. It's just words. I'm not seeing anyone's, anyone or one-on-one -on -one help from anyone, not even victim support. Why? Woman's Refuge, Victim Support, Landlord, Council, MP, Councillor, Racial Discrimination, Crisis Team, Housing Related Support, Police, Domestic Violence Unit, 
who, by the way, gave me the correct device, the environmental health, the Suffolk Mental Health Services, MIND, helplines, Samaritans, shelter, outreach, total voice helpline, the property redress scheme, the multi-agency safeguarding hub, the Citizens Advice Bureau, the churches, you name it, I'm asking. Everyone telling me to keep log, to keep a log, tell the police, tell the council. I've done it all and I've followed the advice. What do you suggest I do now? The borough of the council, the system is not working or they are deliberately ignoring my pleas for help. I have attached one of my threatening texts and I look forward to maybe a lifeline. Kind regards. Kerry. That is the sheer level in 2017 that I had to go through to get my life saved. That's right. Sheer level. Thank you for, for um, watching Charmaine. Thank you. I appreciate the viewers when they come in and watch and catch up. I really appreciate it. But all of those things that um, I was reporting, uh, I'll be careful here. Um, I'm being very careful. Um, I kept going to the police uh, and everyone, as you see. I'm being very careful not to put names in here. But as you see here, you can see scared, bad one, nothing to lose. These are the people from the perpetrators, you know, um, things like that. And then you've got fires being set off in the house. And um, I'm having to report everything on a daily basis. And I just, it was just overwhelming. And then things like we are going, to, I mean, sorry, just be very careful. We are going to uh, Katie's head in on Hob and then burn. And I'm saying you've got to do the right thing. You know, that's at the very beginning when uh, it started between him and a young tenant. And then when I stuck up to the young tenant by reporting him to the, uh, the estate agent, the estate agent turned on me for reporting that. Um, and then my life was hell. And so, yeah, I was up against men. Absolutely discriminating and look at this this is, says uh, chopping up again you know there's a lot of chopping up and my all of these files of my public my pleas uh, for please can you help me uh, to write down and log all of these files I had to log every single thing report things I was in recovery of mental health um, relapsed from being homeless um, and I'd just moved to that property and when I'd moved to that property I didn't know I thought it was going to be a self-contained studio and it turns out there was an adjoining door so he had access into that property that I was in as well which was awful uh, and horrible feeling to know that he could just the other side of the door and I'm living in that same building so <clears throat> on the 15th of um, December 2016 because that's when it really started in the night before they wanted to taser this man because um, of his actions he was always drunk he has narcissistic behavior and schizophrenia um, he was just absolutely charmer very much a charmer so because I was in recovery after being homeless and obviously at affection mental health and everything else um, before I moved there, I was supposed to be going to a recovery college, which was uh, to, about to talk about anything that bothers you so you can replace the old coping strategies for more stuff. So I had to write and um, attend and cancel my appointment for my recovery. Um, and what I wrote to the recovery was, hi, I am so sorry I missed the course on Wednesday. But I had to call the police because I was in fear of my life with the upstairs neighbour and his violent outbursts. I also had to tell the landlord and my social worker, please forgive me. This has set me back and I'm feeling really bad that the fact that my landlord 
will not take note. In fact, he blames me and I've only been here for eight weeks. But my neighbour has violent has been violent to the other tenant and has also threatened to cave his head in. And has also told me he shot his brother a few times but missed. Should I be worried about my life? Yes, I should. Especially as he started being funny towards me. Constantly texting and now banging on my ceiling, scaring me, shouting. Last thing I want to do is have a breakdown. Now I have to live like this, in fear. The police can't do anything unless he attacks me. Great. Please sign me up if I haven't asked already for next year. That was December. This went on until April. Constantly, daily, stalking, blocking my cars in. And, um, <laughs> I had submitted so much evidence, it's unreal. Um, there was 15 pieces here at the moment that I had submitted so much evidence in regards to this case. Uh, it was unreal. I had medical letters. Um, I had to get my subject access to show who said what, where was said, and what were they on the same page of, of getting all the same information? Um, that's what safeguarding means. That means multi-agency. When you're working with people, you need to know that everybody's on the same page in relation to somebody that's in fear of their life, that's in danger, that that's, that needs some support. Um, so I had to get my subject access uh, to prove these things because Everywhere I was turning, they were all shutting their doors at me, and it so it's led me to in. Now I understand the terminology of it. Really, it, it's how would you let somebody suffer like that everywhere that you shoot? Go to the rape crisis. I've done every agency possible that I learned throughout my skills of life. Who you could turn to, and then more, and then some. But it just, it just. It went from there because even the mental health services, yes, they were very helpful at the very beginning, writing me a letter in reference. Yes, the police were very, uh, a officer was very um, okay at the very beginning, uh, and then lost, I guess, sight of the caseload and and uh, disappeared as they always do disappear in the middle of it, leaving you to regurgitate to somebody new when when another crime is committed against you. Um. I, these are letters here, here's another one, um, I don't want to actually out these services because um, some of them are there and beneficial for others, but unfortunately those doors were shut at me. So when I again, uh, let's go to January 2017, you see that I've already said I've missed the recovery college because of the violence, I then I'm pleading all that list of names that I've given you, I've said here's another, here's another one. Uh, another letter here and it says um, referral for support with regardless to uh, the living in uh, fear of violence uh, thank you for your recent application uh, the application has now been assessed and based on the information you provided there are no currently eligible uh, sorry you are not currently eligible to receive any housing related support for the reasons detailed there are no housing related support needs that floating support can assist with so you heard my plea. And that's another rejection. Um, it, the list was just constantly up. endless. Here is another one. Uh, it's a safeguarding referral. This one I can show because it's from the police. And it says, um, adult female who is under the care of um, mental health services had an incident where Yes, I was getting angry because I was being bullied and I got angry and and I was screaming for these people to, will you please stop this and stop this, stop it. They, they just, he just this continuously every day and bearing in mind I had a witness. I always had a witness. I had witnesses and there were outside witnesses also. So the level amount of stuff that was going through, oh, it's just unbelievable. That's the problem, isn't it, about people passing off information it just gets lost so that's why you have a multi-agency um so it these safeguard referrals say what the uh these uh, perpetrators were doing um 
another one here, emergency crisis team, because this is how bad it was. It says, uh, telephone call. Um, I spoke to Kerry at the surgery. Uh, she said that she's in a really horrible situation. She describes being bullied at her residence and experiencing racial abuse. Um, she said that she has also been threatened by the estate agent. She also said she lives in a self-contained bedsit, which leads to the shared house. I don't want to hurt myself, but I'm frustrated and I'm getting no help. I'm okay if I'm not being bullied. Carrie says she's called the police out 17 times. She keeps a diary of the incidents and said that the council is not interested. She said that she will ask the GP for a letter. Um, given that she's just been discharged from the, uh, the services, it appears appropriate to ask them to get some support for me because of the stuff that was going through. But when it came down to it, all they could do is write me a letter and tell them what I was experiencing. So we have mental health services that also write in the letter. The primary reason for my breakdown and my emotional state was because of the chaotic issues that are going on at the home that I was at. Um, and that I was uh, being bullied by the tenant and a state agent at the same time. And uh, as she says, I was a high risk of suicide, completely high risk of suicide at one point and then at another point during them, those acts of violence tells me that never considered myself as being a high risk of suicide. That's right. A judgment. One man made a judgment on my life and screwed me over because he wrote me a supportive letter at the very beginning to help me with all of it, knew I had police involvement, knew the police set up a harassment order to, on the perpetrator in favour of myself at the very beginning, and then, and then, wrote me a letter three weeks later to turn around and say, <laughs> basically disbelieving the things that I was saying, apparently, using the words, apparently, apparently, using those kind of words, and so you lose interest in them. So therefore, um, <laughs> we then had that mental worker, health worker, who said that I never went to uh, a meeting at the GP, you know, the one I show you. I didn't go to my GP and speak to a nurse practitioner. And um, he read that. And I couldn't believe that he would lie like that. So I had to go out of my way to go and find the evidence that I did attend appointment, that I did speak to the practitioner, that I did report the harassment, that I was in crisis. I pulled her in it because he was trying to use her as a scapegoat and 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 pretend that I was lying. But she wrote me a letter on the 24th of January 2018. Because remember, I'm trying to clear my name too. Because they have you down as whatever they have you down. So I'm having to go all the way to clear my name from these allegations. And all I did as a victim was say, help me. But as many victims do out there, they are turned upon within the system. And they're looked at as if they're a problem. That's a too common factor. So my uh, to, to get back at these people, I started to um, do my own investigation with the right help and the right authority to help me. Um, and get all my information and get these people to clear my name and admit they helped and admit they heard me ask for help in this situation I am writing dear Kerry because when I phoned up and told him I know what you've done you've been speaking to somebody about me he's telling me though that you said that you didn't see me that's a mental health worker she said, well, we know we both saw you. Well, I want that in writing. Dear Kerry, I'm writing in response to your concern in regards to your communication between myself and your mental health link worker. I can confirm that I did assess you and I did see you. And that gives me a date. Therefore, as we both know, I did see you and did provide you with a letter to support you with your housing issues. I pride myself in the way that I work in my professional and caring manner with both patients and colleagues and, no uncircum and no, under no circumstances can I recall calling you manipulative. As you state in your email and you have been one of our patients for many years and I agree that trust is paramount and I hope that your trust is in us is not damaged due to this incident. 
I can only apologize for the unnecessary stress and upset that this has caused you. And I want to say this is exactly, if you're not very careful, the things that they do. So you see I have her admittance. I'm just covering up date names. And it's not for me to get people into trouble. It's for me to do education around what they do in the system. So we then went. So that is her admission she saw me. This is his lie that she didn't. It says... I spoke, her name was Jodie by the way, I spoke to Jodie regarding Carrie's referral. Jodie informed me that she had not met Carrie and due to her presentation state she was going to kill herself. She spoke to, to the duty doctor who informed Jodie, which makes no common sense, uh, to refer Carrie back to secondary mental health care. I informed her that I've seen Carrie and discharged her two days before she presented to her discharging me through acts of violence, fear of violence, harassment, discrimination. Police calls out and you discharge me when my levels of stress are high. You state to the men you state on paperwork that the mental health worker did not see the mental health practitioner did sorry, the pre nurse practitioner didn't see, see me. This is what you put on paper. So I have to go and get the truth that that is what that's right, truth the truth from them that's how they do you I'm pleading for my life and they're lying on paper only there's a few good ones that tell the truth so yes thank God I have all of those thank God I have all the evidence thank God I write my stories thank God I, uh, I developed uh, education through all of this but the, the thing you see what I'm saying look, look at this Look at this. Look at that. We have to log everything. Every single detail. And the estate agent went as far as going on to my Facebook profile. And trying to manipulate and make out it was me. And what he did, and this is one of the things that I got out of my uh, subject access, so he thought he could go and uh, have meetings. You see, perpetrators should never have been in a meeting on amongst my case when I had allegations against him. Oh, and he was in those meetings. And I have it all on subject access. Isn't that funny? And he went on the Facebook. He printed off paste papers and he handed them over to the police thinking the police would be on his side because I'm reporting his tenant. That's right. His tenant. Get her out. We've seen her type before. We don't want black people there. And you know the funny thing is the person before me, before I lived there, was also of skin colour. He also went for the same thing. And the thing is though he was very vulnerable and he did report things to the police also. So I didn't know I was going to be the next neighbour. And um, live with the tenant from hell. And a shit landlord. So, um, sorry, not the landlord. He was an estate agent. The landlords, I never met the landlords. He was just managing their business. God help them. Um, so he went out and printed off this. And this is what he printed off. And this was in my file. He printed it off because it says, I have never been subject to such disgusting behaviour, trespassing, bullying, discrimination, victimisation, name calling, slander, etc. Threats, I'm shaking terribly, rogue estate agent and bullying weekly, help stop this. What he also done, because that was the fit, that, that, that's what he printed up. But the following year, and this is what I find is very, very, uh, very, um, from the 16th, of, look at this, from the 16th of February to the 16th of February. So this is one year and the other year is another year, yeah? It's two different years. So one is a reminder of a, um, 
you know when they do the reminders and they come up a year later as a reminder so what he's done is clicked on the reminder and decided to print up whatever it is and it says i've got zero power they cannot take my energy zero tolerance for bullying freedom program taught me very well that's by pat craven if you don't know what it is a lot of people don't uh, effort to support people about around domestic violence to recognize the signs and the triggers i will not be your slave and i will not kneel for my freedom fight is on fight for my human rights my freedom woman of almighty strength will get through this move that mountain and you know what four and four and four and um I took it all the way to the ipccc ipccc sorry i'm very aware of uh stop doing that as well and this i had someone take my case on behalf of me and um my case is uh, based on a case study bijan abrini and that is b i j j a n Ibrini is E B R A H I M I. Bijan Ibrahimi. You will find his case on YouTube. And I base my case, that's the level of my case that went on for five and a half months. I base my case on his case. Because that's how serious this was. And they found in my favour. This case, if I was to, how long have I got? You happy? I've got 15 minutes. So, I can go on to tell you, right, my victim impact statement. Mrs. Taylor made a victim, in, that was my name back then, Mrs. Taylor, I don't really care who looks me up or whatever, this is the truth in your face, I've had compensation since, I've won it since, therefore, I can only speak my truth. Mrs. Taylor made a victim impact statement following a telephone call. The victim impact statement was sent to an inspector. Blah, 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 blah. Obviously, I'm going to wash out my names. Um, Mrs. Taylor considered she was forced out of her home by the police telling her not to return to her flat following communi community resolution order, where um, the perpetrator was able to remain in his flat I had to go and find a place of safety. And I've been trying, I was trying to do that for a very, very long time, uh, for the whole five months, and I kept getting those doors slammed at me. Isn't it funny that the victims, once again, have to go through this homeless situation while the perpetrators lay comfortable in their seats. Um, the landlord was... I informed the landlord that the police had been made complaints against the, the perpetrator. Um, uh, several reports were given from the police to the estate agent about the perpetrator. Uh, also, um, the police failed to take any statements from myself or my partner um, before the last incident where the perpetrator threatened to slit my throat. And... Uh, come downstairs and sort me out alongside my partner and slit our effing throats and kill us. That is in brackets. That's what's written down here. Um, this went on for so long and it finally the only reason he was arrested because he had said what he said in front of the police officers. And on that day, they found that. And it was funny because it was the second time. Not second time. Um, when, when they were police arrested him, the people that had to come back, it was very noticeable that in the five months, nobody had taken any statements from me. So um, we knew that those they were, they were lacking in that, but, but uh, too many cooks in the kitchen. But when we went back over all of this, we submitted all of those statements um, in the form of MG11s. And... Um, to the IPCC with evidence and evidence and evidence and evidence. Um, I had got solicitors involved. I'd done it all uh, to help myself out of that horrendous tenant and estate agent from hell. And even when I moved out of that situation and I went into a B and B, um, you see, that's just one chapter of the hell. 
uh, when I was fighting for my life, trying to get help, the council said no. Then I went to another council who did say okay. Now five months, one council said no. So the minute I took myself again to a different one, they took me in. So who was right and who was wrong? Same circumstances, same conditions, same people involvement, police, um, uh, police ambulance, a whole lot involved in my case to say, this woman is going through this, you know. This is really happening to her. The estate agent has done this. The, the tenant has done this. But you see, nobody ever wanted to believe me. And I actually, in fact, to be absolutely honest with you, that um, I got to the point where my legal representation that I had stayed with me from day one all the way to the end, uh, winning, helping me win my cases. We even had the MP, the MP, and I will write it down, the MP involved right here, who wrote in our in favour again, who says, I'm writing to you behalf of you, I'm writing on behalf of my constitute, Miss Kerry, blah, 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 blah. Um, Miss Kerry had attended one of my surgeries and outlined in her clear concerns with antisocial behaviour in the property she is living with. I have been informed that her neighbour is harassing her and hurling racial abuse at her. I am told he is also continuously turning off the electric to her flat as her food box is outside his home. Miss Kerry Taylor has shown me footage, video footage of this occurring as well as loud noises coming from her neighbour above. Mrs. Terry, uh, Kerry Taylor also raised great concerns and alleges you have admitted yourself into home, her home without giving 24 hours notice to Kerry to do so. I would therefore request your assurance that you have never entered her property without notifying her in advance. Once he received this, the estate agent, he came back again, this time serving me a section. A, a, a section 8 which is a false allegation of drugs on it and so we couldn't believe what we was hearing so that's going to be a challenge not having that this man is entering my property he can plant freaking drugs in my property he's already done it he has a key he has this he's done all of that so I had to go to great lengths to protect myself so yes once he received that, he came back again, but I was not alone. And yet, we had to make another 999 call again. And I was petrified. And I was already in relapse. Crisis teams, anyone I could have to help me out of the situation that I was in. Hi, if you just come in, please do rewind it. Is it it's the whole journey, uh, not the whole journey, but that's one chapter of it. That's the plea from a simple email, and that went out to loads of people. I did everywhere. Woman's Refuge, Woman with a Voice, Victim. In the end, Victim Support did come along, and they helped me in the end. But the listening ear and give me some alarms, and um, they stood beside me. She was uh, Sharon Pennington. I would like to say thank you for my lifeline. Catherine Holland from Victim Voice Ability, I would also say thank you for my lifeline and my voice. The only two women that stood by me. And then when I got to the other end and the homeless situation now, because police had told me to leave, that's another year and a half out of my life and another year of discrimination. So once you're a victim, you become victimized all over again. Now the housing story, uh, the discrimination, you'll find those things on YouTube, on the Mind Over Matter YouTube channel. Some of those stories are there, and I documented my journey all the way through. But the breakthrough that I had, and I, I just trying to find you one sheet, one sheet of paper here. The breakthrough that I had was I did not late take any of it lying down I now go out and I now give back and I um, tell people history versus the reason for crises um, so I have my own little way of teaching people back 
now um, without harm. We don't ever try and harm people, but we do tell our story. It's not right to keep things so private um, and not help other people. Victim impact, victim support. Just so people know that I tell you, you have to go to great lengths to prove to people that you tell them the truth and you know what you're talking about. So, um, sorry, no. Yeah, I'm going to read them. Thank you. Um, so you go to victim support for all of this who listens to you, help you, advises you, ends up being your ear, but you, you can't have them on a constant daily basis, can you? When it's going through it, you're going through it daily, just to keep logging things and taking the opportunity to speak to people when you can. She wrote on the 13th of March 2017, anything they could do to help me get my voice out. Um, she wrote, the above named person has recently been receiving support for ongoing harassment in her own home. This, this, the incidents that they have experienced have left them feeling vulnerable and they have informed me that their health has, has suffered. Kerry has disclosed she finds living at this current at her current address very stressful and would like to find alternative accommodation to leave as soon as possible. I would appreciate if you can take this into consideration when you're looking into housing needs. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you require further information. She wrote to also to be a second voice for me to get me out of the situation. Even they wasn't listening to her voice. Not for a very long time. So it's very difficult for women to have their voices heard. I know that. I really do know that. And most of these perpetrators are men. And when they do come in the shape of a, a man times two, times three, times four, when everywhere. You see, even when I went for the community trigger, the first thing I did when you say, what is a community trigger? That's to report antisocial behavior when it happens more than once. So when you went, when I met him, I sniffed him out a mile away. I went, can I just ask you a question? He said, yeah. I said, Sorry, but something's just telling me you're police. Are you police? He said, was, are you police or ex-police? He says, yeah, my back's gone up straight away. I've had nothing but failings from individuals, uh, male police officers, apart from one who actually did stand up for me in my favour. Um, I won't mention his name, but I've already thanked them. Um, so, two, actually. And they're the ones that's that put in their own report of what they've witnessed and the fact that they said my statement should have been done all five months worth. So when you um, have issues with the police, you don't really want to call them. Sorry, you don't really want to call them. And but then I understand that everyone's an individual behind that uniform. You can get bad and you can get really good people that will listen. So um, I've learned to see how people react to me first, how they are, mannerism before I speak to them, whether or not they're going to be understanding or hostile. So, yeah, that's a big issue, isn't it, when you want to report crimes? But um, I had to. I had to report it, and we went to great lengths of all those communications to get my voice heard. I was never alone in trying to get my voice heard. I think that's what made the difference. If I would was going to be alone, I certainly would not have made it out of there alive. This man was planning to pour petrol on me. He was planning to pour petrol on me. See, the thing is about a narcissist, they will say something about, you've done it, and it's them doing it all along. And everything that he was doing, like switching off my electricity and messing with my hot water and doing that to the poor young boy who was there beforehand, I'm glad I think I entered that place. I think that boy got out because of me, because I spoke up for him. And this boy didn't have a lock on him. And I actually think her, along the line that that boy was getting raped. I know it's a quite horrendous accusation. But I did report that that man was being bullied. The young man was being bullied. Um, very, very disturbing things. The man was in a, the boy was a nervous wreck. And I think maybe the universe aligned me up for that, that property to get that young boy out there. But also to have a lot of education. And the thing is, out of my experiences, I did not waste it. I don't. I now do suicide prevention. Yeah, that's what I do. I do mind over matter, suicide prevention. That's what I did. 
Mind Over Matter Suicide Prevention, the Mom Project. And I just give back. I help where I can, where you need to go to get help, who you need to see. Cut out all of this running around in circles. It's too much for victims when they've got to speak to almost 80 to 170 communicators. Too much. So what we do is, what's your problem? Let me have a listen. There is somebody, an investigator, advocate, whatever else. We can do those things. We do give you some back and knowledge back. That's what we try to do. So it's just a step forward. This is from recovery. We gain, recover, rediscover. It's a step forward from all those traumatic events. That's just one out of many out of my life. Um, and I'm just a survivor. I am know now to claim my space and claim my energy. Uh, Charmaine. I can't, sorry, hi, thank you, Don. being patient, um, I can't believe this happened to you, this is all just so wrong, I hope today you're better, absolutely, I'm a lady that was on the live last night, thank you for watching, um, I did wave, yes, I remember, um, in Toronto, Canada, I am a domestic violence survivor, it's time to need a friend, please message me anytime, please, but that's what we're here for. Connect, like minded, etc. You know, women of the world. It's victim, survivor, domestic violence, survivor times two. I don't want to count how many times I've been in it, and I had to recognize that I had to do that freedom course to understand and recognize those abuses, to recognize them, but most of all, recognize how much of ourselves do we give out and strip down because of our kindness. There has to be someone that could help you get out of the situation. I'm out of that situation. I made it through the storm. That was 2017. I now, I moved, I relocated. I went through the motion, went through the mill, relocated, um, completely relocated. And uh, that was, that took some adjusting. And then I developed my own company, which fights against abuse which stands up for people that are being neglected, which helps people with disabilities and mental health, you know, um, but it's not about mental health, it's what causes the mental health. And what causes the mental health for me is victimization. That's what caused it for me. Um, stress levels were just up here, but you know, I'm out with that now. I'm, I'm out with it. Uh, I'm settled, I have my own accommodation, I don't trouble no one, I just do this for a living, uh, talk to people, I go out there in the community, I try to fundraise, I try to um, support what we do for the community, what we do is, like I said, that lifeline, suicide prevention, mind over matter, That's it's, it's a lifeline, <laughs> it's, it's, if people use the word mental health, I want them to stop using the word mental health and use the terminology, what's the problem and the underlying issues out of it, what causes the depression, that's the thing. So we, we do actually try and stay out of that depression. And um, I just, I, I'm enjoying my life now. Unfortunately, you still get perpetrators that don't want to see you progress. They want to shut something like what I'm doing down because, you know what? But there's people like them that keep me in business, to be honest, because everyone that has behaviour problems can affect somebody else's life. And in this case, this this person uh, that I was dealing with literally didn't care. Many people that have been traumatically affected in childhood tend to have their barriers up and manipulate the way of the world and when they can't have their own way they make things up so they can claim back their space and push you out and do all they can to cause hell for you and narcissistic people that hate women you find those men that hate women and they will go out their way to destroy a woman this is what we put together uh, all the people that we uh, attend to. It says a uh, black woman turned away, and I was turned away by the race and relations. Well, I had to be. I don't know how race and relations is not actually run by somebody of my own complexion. It isn't. So when you go to these people and they reject you, you then have to write another letter. I said black woman needs help. That's what I said. And you know, it's diabolical that. 
I'd like to see a black woman run race and relations. I would. Because I don't understand that when you're pleading for your life as a black woman and it's against a white per person and you're going to see a white person about discrimination, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be rude, I'm trying to be realistic. How is that going to help you relate to what is what it isn't? So it's just bear that in mind sometimes to and maybe maybe take some education from victims that have been through it to recognize what you should be looking for in as far as discrimination i i know you see it i know you hear it but when you've got it in your your hair this is the story that we we put out ipswich woman it says black woman turned away by race relations because we did ask we did plead we did beg at the very beginning but right in the very end we had to go back only after we got ourselves a lawyer isn't that bad Five months of ra rubbish and then go for it. Um, it says Ipswich woman has been discriminated. That's where I was from, Ipswich. Woman has been discriminated by a local authorities. Police, the state agent, told her uh, to add insulted injury. The organisations who she turned for for assistance, refusing her, stating a lack of resources. You saw for yourself. I can point out all of those letters that say exactly the same thing. Even after sitting MP... Uh, about the time it was be uh, Mr. Ben Gummer supporting the letter on behalf of myself. Um, the uh, so I've, I've got to be careful, so I'm being very careful with my words. So I'm reading before I put it out. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, the race and equality states that they are understaffed. That's what I got back. See, I was pleading for my life, and they gave back uh, that, that I was under. They were understaffed and couldn't look at my evidence, or even pass my details off to an independent solicitor, which was what was needed. That's in my own town. The only place you can go to get help because of the colour of your skin. And they turned me away, and I had police involvement. I had it all, and they turned me away, and it was just ridiculous. Since being denied help, the woman wrote back to the MP. However, after six weeks, neither he or his office has responded to my letter, leaving me devastated. That's because the office had changed. And despite these supporting letters, she was told to go away and seek help from the woman's refuge that she had already had dealings with. In, sh in short, none of the relevant parties have lifted a finger, all stating go to the police and the council, who in turn pass back the back buck to each other. The woman suffers from mental Ill health issues, has been left in a flat whilst being subject to racial abuse, threatening behaviour, including threats to chop her into pieces, Still, the police have been unable to be reluctant to arrest the, and prosecute the individual who's known to them for exactly the same type of behaviour. He did get arrested in the end. However, he got a smack on the wrist. And his excuse for his behaviour over the five months was... Um, uh, he forgot to take his medication. Had a slight wobbly. Rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. <laughs> rubbish. When people use that behaviour about mental health, about, oh, it's because of my mental health. I understand you might have behaviour problems. I might, I might understand you might have all fears and wobbles, but telling the truth, telling the truth is not a hard thing to do, is it? It's not a very hard thing to do. Being kind isn't a very hard thing to do, but it is in somebody else's eyes. But it's okay. I got your truth. I stood in mine, and I won, and I won that, so no one can tell me that I am a troublemaker, for all my troubles were the truth, and I had to go out my way and prove them, that's right. So, it, to finalise this, um, one of those councils ignored my uh, cries for help, and in turn, supplied false information that was supplied by the police and the estate agent who now finds 
Myself, guilty of antisocial behaviour whilst a violent man lives above her and continues to uh, cause her alarm and distress. So that's how they twisted it. When I become that victim, they twisted it. One individual had meetings with the perpetrator and they ended up twisting information. Uh, they got found out in the end, but um, it was wrong. A police spokesperson said, we looked into the matter and we believe both parties are guilty. However, we have not looked at all the evidence. See, once the evidence was looked at, I'm not guilty. During the five months period, police attended the address in question 16 times. However, not a single arrest had been made. As you notice, I said 16 times at the time. A number of false allegations are also made against the woman and her partner who have never examined or investigation but are left in limbo. The woman and her partner had himself an ex-police officer are now beginning legal procedures against all the parties involved. Both display signs of fatigue and admitted the whole situation has become drained and intolerable and has driven a wedge between them. The estate agent in question has ignored her claims and since served them with an eviction without investigating the circumstances fully or only listening to one of his three residents. So, you know, after doing all of that case, I won my case, I got compensation, I um, got apologies from the councils, I'm homed, um, I, it's peaceful, and I put my compensation into the, my project. So that's the Mind Over Matter Suicide Prevention. And um, all I do is talk and listen and give solutions. I think I've taken up enough of your time now. <laughs> oh, good. So you said, how can someone tell you whether you're suicidal or not? Only you would know. Trust me, I tried to commit suicide when I was 18. I will never forget that look on my mother's face when I did. Please message me. Thank you. We can talk about that. That's what I talk about. Let's prevent that suicide. Do you know what I mean? I got to the point where I felt suicidal. I would always admit when I'm not feeling well, I felt suicidal. But I have to find out what, why I felt suicidal and the reason why I felt suicidal was because of the level of pressure that a victim of abuse and harassment on a daily basis it was too much wasn't getting any sleep I wasn't eating I couldn't even go into the next door kitchen to prepare any food anymore because that's where I used to but because the perpetrator was next door I could no longer do that anymore so going out either was oh my god is he gonna be outside around the side is he gonna put his bike over my hatch so I can't get out of the fire exit when I want to. There was a lot of things that were going on there. Um, it was horrible. Well, you have a great amount of information they should help you. They they didn't they didn't help. Some did, some didn't as I explained, but my, my help came from somebody who actually knows the law. And um, meanwhile while they playing silly brothers we gathered up our file and we did our investigation before we presented it. So, uh, to the IPCC, who in turn says, Sorry, they found it in my favour. Racial bias. So, when you, you can say you lived racial bias, that's a big thing. That's a horrible story. And this part here is just one. That's my living in the house. I haven't even shown you the footage, I've not shown you the videos. There is all of that, and I do keep these people's identities out of it, just simply because I only want to use it for educational purposes. So people can learn from their mistakes. The estate agent is still a state agency. Uh, I have still heard some horrible situations about him, but like other people, they too also need to go knowledge yourself about their law, their rights, the equality, the law. But I understand that sometimes when you need shower, and that's all you've got. But it's not the estate agent you want to be looking after, uh, looking at really. Well, yes, they have a responsibility. And did you know that if you are in a shared accommodation, you are legally allowed to be told who you are living with? That's right. What's their background? A background check on the people that you are living with. After all, the council do your background checks on you, of whether or not you're a fit tenant to be living in the neighbourhood or not. That's background checks. That's um, one of the things they do. But in this case, I was giving an accommodation, which I'm very grateful from the estate agent to have given me the accommodation and an opportunity. However, I do believe that half the time it's just about money. So really, there was no empathy or compassion when we did first take ourselves down 
in 2016 when it started. Is that right? I can't remember now. 17. Whenever it started, um, the dates. We did tag ourselves down to the estate agent and the estate state agent. I do have that recording, by the way. I don't care what you do, where you go. You can go to the woman's refuge. You can go to the council. Go to the police. I don't care. I don't believe you. And I took his advice. I went to the council. I went to the police. I went to the woman's refuge. And as you know, you've heard the story. But I'm out of that. That was so yesterday's news. But I just want to say there are many people out there suffering at the hands of their estate agents or their landlords or a perpetrator some shape or form and you do not have to tolerate unwanted behavior you do not have to be victimized or persecuted because you happen to just be in their property does that mean you have to put up with bad behavior and bullying no not at all so yeah and top of that after i got out and i finally um so when I was asking the first council for help through fear of violence, priority need under the Housing Act 1996, they were saying, they were just stalling and stalling. Can you get a letter off your mental health worker? Can you get a letter off your doctor? Can you get a letter off victim support? Can you get a letter off the police? Can you do all of these things? I did every avenue. Can you get a letter off your advocate? I did everything. And yet, you know what? Five months later, after pleading with them, taking paperwork and taking paperwork down them, they gave me a case law. Hotik versus London and Zavik is called. That's right. Case law. Read up on that case law. Hotik versus London and Zavik. Sub, 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 um, you can find that on YouTube, that case law. They gave me that case law. But they didn't give it to me once. Because when I got to the other end, after the police telling me to leave that accommodation, for my own safety, because the man's too dangerous, got to the other end, Three weeks later into that council, they gave me a case law, exactly the same, word for word. London and Suffolk versus London and Suffolk. And that case law, word for word, was, um, <laughs> that was an eye opener. Who gives the case law to somebody that's going through domestic violence, somebody that's going through harassment, victimization, and victim acts of crime, criminal behavior? Who does that? Why would you give somebody a case law that is a victim of crime? The victims of crime are vulnerable. They are vulnerable. So that is your criteria, vulnerability. And they wanted me to prove that I was extremely vulnerable over an ordinary vulnerable. What does that mean? What does that mean? Okay. It's tricky. I need to be more vulnerable over an ordinary vulnerable. So you've had the letters from the mental health, but now I've got to prove that I am more vulnerable than anybody else that is going through harassment, acts of violence, Illegal entry, false allegations, stalking, and I'm not vulnerable, and I've got to prove that I'm more vulnerable over an ordinary vulnerable, and I'm homeless as well. Oh, really? So they can then give me this case law twice over, and um. <laughs> it was just unbelievable the case law and that meant I had to get a lawyer because my voice was never going to be enough and I realized that even though you go and get a lawyer that lawyer was not beside me representing me so exchange of money goes on doesn't it somewhere along the line but they was not there when I had to rep my, represent myself in front of a panel meeting of five people but the letter that they wrote stopped and halted proceedings of them evicting me from a B and B. So not only am I evicted, uh, not only sorry, not only am I 
having to leave my home under fear of violence. I get, I'm putting a temporary B&B um, so they do their investigation whether or not I'm eligible for a home. And then three weeks later, sorry, get out. You're not vulnerable. Get out. We don't find you vulnerable. Going home yourself, no matter what you've been through. Um, <laughs> you've got people writing things on your subject, actually. If she throws another tantrum or self-harms, she's out. I got angry, uh, upset. I say angry, upset, frustrated when they gave me that case law and told me to get out. We're not going to help you. No matter what, you've been a victim of all of this. We're not helping you. Get out. Go and sleep outside in the cold. That was the last straw for me. And um, I rang them up and I said, I don't understand what evidence are you saying that I'm not a vulnerable person or that I don't have a disability. Well, now suddenly, after years of you guys telling me that I had mental health and feeding me with prescriptions, now I don't have mental health? So who should I sue here? The NHS here for giving me the prescriptions and the label? Now all of these t times that you're telling people with diagnosis, anybody has a diagnosis of vulnerable, it's got to be registered diagnosis, which mine is. But now I'm not vulnerable. And I don't have a diagnosis. So the lies went on and they went on and they went on and it was just unbelievable the amount of hell victims of abuse go through when trying to resettle after acts of crime against them, uh, almost like a domestic violence. Just because he was a neighbour doesn't mean it doesn't mean it wasn't domestic violence um, and, and domestic abuse, mental abuse, a lot of mental abuse and it was just... It, it, it's just absolutely what I'm trying to find is, is, is something so you just to finalize this so when I went to the council at the very beginning they had and as I said I had an advocate that put all this together for me because I lost communication when you're vulnerable you lose that communication skill it's just gone because you just You've got to deal with the anxiety and everything that's going on in your head so um when i went back to i'm going to make this short so when i went back um when i started going to the council at the very beginning they asked for information to prove so you can prove what you're talking about they said and they wrote it down and they write it in writing and they say um following all the information received from my africa uh, my mental health worker and inquiries with the antisocial behaviour and um, my previous housing and the police. Uh, basically, I found it in my favour and uh, realised there's a problem because there was all of those in and uh, so they were going to keep me on the housing. So the fact that you knew there was a problem, why are you just trying to make me homeless and put me out in the street? So that's what they were doing back then. But it all, it, it, it all came to uh, light in the end uh, when we fought back with the solicitor. Fourteen times I was bypassed after that for a property. So you've given me the letter of vulnerability to get out. fought that with the solicitor, uh, standing up and representing myself. But I did tell them, please do your education around mental health. So they uh, did that. They listened to all the recordings and the police footage and saw all the evidence. And um, they overturned the decision to home me. So they homed me in the end. And um, I'm now settled. And that's a thing of the past. And my future now is helping others that may have also experienced very similar things. So I'm just a survivor. I am not their victim. I am not their victim. I was a victim when I was reading out things, but I am a survivor. And uh, I now, you can find some of my live talks on the Mom Project Mental Health Awareness Real Talk Facebook. Uh, it is not a service, it is a platform where you can express, give out information, share awareness, encourage others give uplifting messages, connect with people like-minded who may have been through serious things and be kind to each other. That's all I ask. Respect. If you don't like someone, leave. We don't name call. We don't name and shame. We don't try not to do that. Although it happens to me, um, 
from people, but I understand that the level and the work that I'm in now is mental health. So therefore, at the end of the day, it takes one to know one. So I understand that their behaviour is of one of uh, unhealthy sometimes, and one of them need that they need the right skills person to help them to learn to be kind. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for um, your time here today. I really appreciate that. I'm glad you're okay today and I'm fighting for my ex in court. Well, if you need any help, any point is we do have, as you heard earlier, we do have those people that with that legal experience willing to always give an ear. We have a good support around us to turn around and give that information from a legal expert. I say legal expert. You only need to be an expert in what you've lived in to actually have hold some of those answers of where you can go to get the help, what information, what forms and all those things. So sometimes it's good to put back. Um he wants vi visitation for my oh, he he wants visitation for my youngest daughter, but he kissed my oldest daughter and I lost the court case so now I'm fighting for him not to get visitation. Oh that's something I'll talk to you behind, not here. And then, thank you for doing that. I was sexually abused by my adopted father six months after he adopted me. From four years old to 12 years old. The day my mum found out, she left him. She got me help I needed. And that is why I love my life today. Because of what's happened. To me, it's not my fault. It's not your fault, Charlie. And that's the thing, isn't it? And I was abused as a child. My story is also there again. Um, two upwards, my memory. And that's where I am today, right? So a few years ago, I was still carrying all those unhealthy issues. Um, and I never looked at life the way I look at it today. And the impact our, ch our childhood has on our life and the impact our upgrowing, our upbringing has on our life and the people around us has on our life. They think they can take, take, take throughout our life. Abuse, rape, child abuse. Then it goes on to domestic violence, doesn't it? All of those childhood stuff, a lot of the people that have gone through those things end up with that domestic violence. Uh, because we're still vulnerable until we find our self-esteem. That vulnerability is there and we need to learn to stop being so vulnerable. This is not our fault, what happened in our past. We had the right equipment, the right tools, the right education, the right information. Had our parents had the right information, the right equipment, half the things like adoption and all of those things and care homes would never have happened to us. I also was in and out of care homes young Asian and even when I got to the 14, 15s and you know, up to 16 year olds, care homes. Why? All begin because of perpetrators. It's always a pattern. I mean, don't see. They see you as the victim, but they don't see the perpetrators, do they? They never see the perpetrators. That's why we're hidden. We hide these things. We hide them. We hide them so bloody long behind a mask. And that mask that we wear, and all those little hidden secrets go really in here. And when somebody actually asks you a direct, a direct question sometimes, did that happen to you? Sometimes when you're vulnerable and you're, you're not quite healed, you'll automatically go in protection mode. No, it never happened. And then years later, love down the line, it comes out, comes flooded out, and your memories come flooding back. Oh, my God. Did that happen to me as a child? When did this children, us children, ever have a chance to grow in life? So I think, even down when you talk about the... Uh, when I go back down to the estate agent and my perpetrator, you've got to look back into even their childhood. What was their childhood like? So there's a common pattern from the show, from children to children passed on towards adults. And unfortunately, it's people like myself and yourself that have to live that journey and find out what life's about, find and discover that self-respect and not let the perpetrators steal any more of our enjoyment. It's the making of us, not the breaking of us. Because it just... It's so knowledge, it just makes sure we're more detailed and more picky in the people that are around us. And every now and again, we're so we're so kind, let people in. Every now and again, you get a raw egg, just a raw egg. 
and sometimes they just need educating. Have you got time to educate people back? We call that karma. <laughs> karma gets them back in the right way. Honey, I'm glad you are out the other end and if you would like to talk at any time, catch up and I hope to see you on Open Talk that we can meet at all these times. I know the time style's different as well, I'm well aware of that. Um, but what can we say? We're here, we survived, we lived, we tailed the sail. Yep, um, I, I'm reading your 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 your, uh, your posts. It's a lot of trauma there, isn't there? It's a lot of protective. You want to do a lot of protecting there, and so rightly so, because you're gonna you're gonna be the woman that knows. And this is the problem when we know, because we've been there. We see the signs. We can recognise something. What we're doing is we not we just fight for our life. We fight for them grandkids lives and any other children's lives and anybody else to to it doesn't happen to them and it's not a figment of our imagination because the sign in the warning signs there we learn and we learn how to spot a perpetrator we're very knowledgeable more than anyone when it comes to grooming we know how to spot them we never knew how to speak out but we do now and as long as I've got breath in my body, I make sure that people, I will make sure that people understand the damage that they, they can do. Um, they're not finding themselves sometimes. They just, just pick your, they don't pick us, they, you don't pick your select your partners, they select you, don't they? So, in a sense, when you're broken, but when you are in power and you're in a powerful place, you're able to, have those choices for yourself and take your time in life and not be so needy with things throughout life. I went from relationship to relationship to relationship. Three marriages, three kids, all different fathers. I ended up raising my children as a single mother. I had only one father that had a great input on one of my children's life. Um, the other one was long distance and the other one didn't want to know. So, you know, going through all that, mother being a mother and, and going through all of these traumatic times and stuff like that, I now teach back. Recognise the signs, take your life back and try to protect others and that's what we're trying to do. And I understand your plight and what you're doing completely. Um, we've got to protect that generation because it takes years to overcome abuse it takes years to overcome that traumatic those traumatic events around physical emotional and mental abuse it takes years of healing recovery i know <laughs> regain recover and rediscover that's the motto so once you regain control of the situation and you can recover from the situation you can then rediscover how to avoid those pit holes and how to go forward i love it when i'm talking because i'm getting really really hot right now and so that means yeah i'll take the blessing thanks for listening i keep going forward don't kneel for your freedom keep going this came from out of nowhere today. Too much thinking. It's good to think and reflect how far I've come. Yeah. Gonna leave it like there.